Hello, and thank you for joining us here today. Now, our next speaker is a familiar face to the Malaysia Tech Month series, Mr. Tavi Kotka, first former CIO of the Estonian government. He presented to us last year on MTM 2020. His session was so well-loved that we're so pleased to have him back here with more great insights to share with us. And with that, the floor is now yours, Mr. Tavi. Mm -hmm. Hello and greetings to everyone. Like uh, welcome to uh, welcome, great, great welcomes from from Estonia, from the north. Uh, so yeah, I mean, uh, uh, last year uh, we talked about digital governments. Um, like today, I want to give you more insight about the futures. Uh, what will be the next, let's say, ten years like uh, like in digital societies? Uh, my personal background, just to remind you, I'm an engineer. I uh, also have been uh, uh, like an uh, entrepreneur, started several companies, built up several companies. Uh, uh, after working for the government, now back in, in private sector and also helping um, uh, Reliance Geo uh, with their development in India. Uh, so, uh, like next 10 years, and these are societies. Um, we have done now uh, several studies and uh, analyzed the different countries uh, globally. And to uh, to say it shortly, uh, thanks to COVID, um, I mean, like nobody likes the COVID, but there has been, uh, I'll say, a radical uh, uh, change in the speed of how societies actually accept um, digital solutions. Uh, more and more things, more and more services uh, are moving to internet uh, towards self-service. And uh, I think most important what governments have understood is that, uh, that there is a pain and this pain cannot be solved uh, by governments only. So building truly proper digital society, you actually need uh, the joint effort from the private sector and the government sector. Only then you actually can start moving ahead with your with your digital society development, because like people don't use uh, government services on daily basis uh, so much as they do with the private sector services. Um, so the key points, like what you need to do, like to build a proper digital society, they have say, stayed the same, but truly the governments are in in on in different level. So uh, um, like uh, we have seen great development uh, here, um, like in Europe, especially let's say in, from south in Spain and, and Portugal. Uh, we see great development in India and other countries. We don't see so much development uh, in US and Canada, but um, like um, we truly hope it it, it will change. Uh, so uh, next 10 years, um, the government still will be, uh, I'll say, uh, busy with building the basics, the baseline. So yes, like uh, there like, seems to be enough internet everywhere, but they still struggle with implementing uh, uh, digital identities. They still struggle with uh, exchanging data between uh, different uh, uh, systems and silos. Uh, uh, so, so it's not about the question about ID cards. It's still a question like, how can I be sure like who is behind device? So, like if if there is a John Smith, how can I be sure that it's exactly that John Smith? And it's not a question uh, that it's a government problem. Uh, it's actually the whole like teacher society problem. Like in the same way how you log in into the bank system, or the same way how you log in the uh, healthcare system or educational system, like. Uh, in most countries, it's still like uh, like one username password uh, for for every different uh, application, which is a nightmare, and um, and it's it's a huge cost for for all the private and government entities to actually build those uh, authentication authorization tools uh, um, with a with a proper security. So instead of that, having like uh, uh, standards put in place in a country and 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 forcing not forcing but let's say um, strongly suggesting uh, everybody to use it like and uh, basically create an ecosystem where uh, uh, people rely on 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 the same kind of uh, of security tools. They don't have to be from the same provider, but like the standards need to be the same. Um, this still doesn't happen too much, uh, but you need this because uh, you can't 
bring sophisticated services to the internet, like uh, without knowing who is behind the device and knowing without guaranteeing that who is behind the device. The same happens with uh, digital signatures, like uh, uh, like if you are an investor, I truly suggest you uh, to still like buy DocuSign uh, shares. Uh, DocuSign is still uh, like number one uh, uh, digital signature provider in the world. Uh, although like uh, in, in North European parts, for example, it's not considered like the most secure uh, signature method uh, possible, like uh, they have better tools here. But I mean, it works and, uh, and it's, it's, it's very important that like uh, countries, um, uh, law systems, courts, uh, uh, different uh, government administrations, uh, also private sector, uh, would basically accept the same tools, like and same principles, um, um, like uh, so you can actually forward and pass uh, on and back uh, different digital information or documents. I mean, today it's still documents in most countries, but uh, definitely it will be more uh, information only that is shared. So, uh, <clears throat> so that's the that's the that's the main main part. Uh, like interesting stuff, like let's say, like like eye voting or voting over the internet. Uh, we can we cannot still see that this will happen anytime soon. Like uh, so, Estonia has uh, voted over the internet uh, like since uh, two thousand five, so already sixteen years, uh, and uh, currently basically half of the nation uh, votes electronically. The rest still uh, like wants to wear a suit and 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 wants to go to the voting offices physically uh, so once again like uh, for the audience from us this is not machines in the corner in the voting uh, polls we are talking here like uh, actually voting behind your computer at home so uh, so this uh, uh, i mean uh, india uh, um, flirts uh, with this idea uh, they also have a proper tool um, like they can be sure like that behind devices is exactly that that person uh, or they proper they have proper tools. Um, uh, this is not still uh, something. Uh, I mean, it's too complicated for the most of the most of the countries in the world. Um, so, and it, this can be one of the very good like measurements, like uh, how ready countries' infrastructure is. And once again, I want to uh, uh, say that it's not about the government. It's actually the government plus the private sector. So, if the private sector trusts the tools that the nationwide provided. Then uh, also like uh, basically this shows the government has done a great job. So um, uh, the same happens like the same like uh, like one focus uh, as I said like will go uh, on on still managing or like trying to uh, build up the or solve the question who is behind the device. Uh, the second like uh, major thing we see during the next 10 years, uh, and it's funny, I mean, like I say that, we see silos and public-private sector exchanging data. Uh, I mean, now, now it is like everybody has APIs and it, it, it seems to be so obvious, but it's not. I mean, we still see that like even uh, the citizens, the companies, uh, they still have to provide same information for in multiple places. You still see that databases are, or the data quality is very low because uh, there is not dependence between the systems and like uh, the, the, the level of the quality can be set by the side of themselves. Like, so it doesn't work. Uh, and even here in Scandinavia, in North, uh, uh, we see first steps uh, that, uh, uh, into the government or between the government and private sector, the data is exchanged. Yes, I mean, uh, it happens in uh, like logical places like let's say customs or like taxes. Uh, we don't see that happening in, in, in uh, like uh, in, the, in the next level questions like. Uh, so, uh, for example, like uh, this is the picture of Estonian uh, uh, X-Road ecosystem and like, uh, it still, still continues to be like, uh, like good and working. Uh, so uh, more than 96% of all government transactions are actually machine to machine. So you actually can build like those digital government also if, if you actually want to. Uh, uh, 
why this is important, uh, especially in COVID time, we saw that these, uh, if, uh, for example, uh, healthcare systems, uh, different hospitals, uh, if they're not capable to exchange data, I mean, it actually affects their um, readiness to fight against uh, serious illnesses. I mean, uh, uh, even though Estonia has everything connected, uh, we also have to say uh, sorry and, and admit that uh, uh, it was a, COVID was also or COVID is uh, still a good test for us also because uh, um, even though we can change uh, data like between the systems and data always uh, moves together with a person, uh, uh, we still lack let's say the notification methods were not in place properly. Uh, uh, and one thing is that you have the systems up and running. The other thing is that how you motivate your people to actually vaccinate and, and, uh, and to be prepared uh, to fight against this, uh, this, this crazy virus. But uh, even like simple things like, like that, like having, let's say, health data shareable, uh, even that in the world, like in most countries, doesn't exist. So, 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 so if when we talk about future, when we talk about next level like digital societies, we still see governments during next year struggling to solve those basic things that like you as engineers or like entrepreneurs or specialists have been already doing in your local systems more than 20 years. So nationwide it's, it's harder, but it's not impossible. Like you just need to, I'll say, uh, basically separate the politics from the engineering and then when you do that uh, and start like building like uh, your your society with a goal that okay let's 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 make our systems talk let's solve the who is behind the device question etc uh, you will see like a uh, tremendous improvement so uh, <clears throat> like what did, like and like from the evolu evolution perspective uh, I think tax systems are like uh, very good examples, like how to explain uh, like what is the evolution of, of different stages um, uh, of, of digital society and then e-government. So uh, like first thing is that like, uh, like in, in every country where you have to pay taxes, you have to declare your incomes and, and your revenues. And uh, that's the baseline for the tax calculation. And it happens on paper or it happened on, on paper. So luckily, more and more countries are now moving uh, for, from, from paper to digital. So uh, the first step is that uh, you can actually uh, basically declare the same like paper form, like in digital form. So after that, uh, like the next step is uh, like uh, we get it fully automated, which means that instead of asking the information from the citizen or from the enterprise, like uh, the tax and custom department actually pulls information from different systems, like uh, uh, that's, that's the next level. So uh, if this is done, like and like and next evolution step is. Uh, uh, like fraud detection. So, um, like when you have information in the system, the next question is like how to use that uh, to give information back, uh, let's say, to the companies in a way that uh, you as a company can uh, basically benchmark yourself uh, against uh, hard other uh, players on the market. Uh, like, um, what are the averages? What are the average salaries? Like, um, am I above or below? Like, uh, how much export I'm doing compared with the, with the, with the rest of the like uh, like discipline like where I'm working etc. So uh, plus like you can do fraud detection like uh, you see on this picture there is a, a VAT control system. So uh, according to the OECD, Estonia uh, is the best tax collector in the world. Uh, so which means that uh, we spend least money to collect taxes and. Uh, People actually like to pay taxes because, like, if the system is transparent and if the taxes are not high, um, uh, people understand like why why they need to do that. Plus, it's very difficult to cheat. So uh, we have built a system where basically um, uh, we had a huge VAT fraud uh, like ten years ago, uh, but now like uh, the ERP systems are automatically sending information to the tax and custom. Uh, and there are robots basically matching deals uh, without human uh, interference. And if they see uh, deals not matching, like uh, they will send the controls in. And in this way, uh, like the manual work is minimum, 
we don't have uh, like we have very limited amount of, of uh, controlling officers, but uh, it results uh, with a very honest and transparent uh, market. Because I mean, even if you're an entrepreneur, like it's very hard to compete in the market where, uh, let's say, you pay taxes but your next door competitor doesn't. Like it's unfair, it's uneven, and then basically it spoils your economy and it creates corruption and, and like other other bad outcomes. Like. Um, but that's another, another like evolution uh, level like that you can achieve if um, if you have built like proper tools. Um, and uh, what is like uh, like how say like end end game here is like uh, what the Stevia is building at the moment is uh, I think um, like uh, you don't need accountants in your company anymore. Uh, for government reporting, like uh, you only need accountants for yourself for like, let's say to do the financial analysis and cash flow predictions and like, like basically valuable stuff for the companies. So if you think about it, like accounting as such, it's not um, uh, like accounting is important. Like it, it adds value to your company and like to your business, but uh, reporting data and statistics to the government like it actually doesn't add too much like to your to your business value like it's it's more like a cost that you have to do uh because like you want to operate like and uh, like a Stevenon idea is that like let's try to uh, get this cost to minimum so uh, how to like minimize the reporting needs uh from the companies uh to absolute zero so uh like let's say if you're um uh, if your if your if your uh, business doesn't involve any cash, everything happens like uh, using like digital currencies, or like everything happens in your in like uh, all the events happen in your bank account. Uh, uh, and if you tag your bank account or like those records in a proper way, like you can fully automate the, the reporting part. And uh, that's like uh, where Investonia wants to be with with all our services, not like not just with uh, with uh, accounting and then the ERPs or taxes, uh, also in 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 other terms, like in other ways, where basically you you uh, you're transparent with your information. If you need something, you consent uh, systems to use your data, and voila, just just things happen like. Uh, I mean, like a uh, great example is, is uh, in our case, is eSchool. Like um, here on the screen, you can see uh, I have three children. I have four children, three of them actually go to school. So uh, for us, it's it's uh, very important that uh, we have full transparency of what happens with my children with my school. And, uh, and uh, I think, Thanks to the digital tools and thanks to the like, great involvement of the parents, uh, Estevina now, now, is, now is number one in education in Europe. Uh, we still lose some points to some Chinese cities and Singapore, so but let's hope we can catch up. And here is, you see again, like uh, it's a great example. Like uh, uh, like the system doesn't say that. Like uh, I mean, like. Uh, uh, which uh, a child from your classroom or, 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 or child's classroom was was better than than your child, but it shows like to the parents very transparently like uh, how the child performs, and like uh, many families have a rule that like if the child like uh, falls uh, below the average, like uh, the parents actually help uh, uh, to catch up. Uh, but what is important is that uh, it's very easy and simple like uh, to connect yourself because like all the systems know that okay behind device is, is father or mother so I can show this information like uh, to them and uh, it's very like simple and, and transparent way how you can create a communication platform between the like, school teacher parent. Uh, and just another example, like great example, like why this baseline needs to be in place. Like, um, so what else? Uh, yeah, here is the also the if you, you can basically look it up uh, by yourself. Uh, the latest information I have about PISA is 2018, but uh, should be the same. It, it doesn't change like every year, like too much. Like should be same, the same like uh, today's also. And I really want to salute to our our teachers. Uh, during the COVID time, uh, during the lockdowns. Um, the, uh, yeah, it, it took a couple of uh, months to set all the all the systems up and it was a new situation for the teachers. But uh, 
but all in all, like uh, they may manage well uh, during the COVID period. Uh, yep. So uh, one more thing about the future, I wanted to touch, like they only gave me half an hour, so I, I can't push it like uh, in, 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 and then reveal too many secrets. But the one focus area we have took is women. Uh, Estonia is a great startup nation. Um, like we have already seven unicorns, and even though there's only 1.3 million people here, uh, we have a very strong uh, startup ecosystem that grows uh, like 30% per year. Uh, our ICT sector has been strong uh, like um, many decades already. And uh, we have a problem, like we have more work than we can do. Uh, we could do more, like way more export uh, than we do at the moment. Uh, Estonia doesn't have uh, like too many natural resources except uh, very clean air and water and forest. So uh, it always has been like more uh, science-based um, economy for us. And the question is like, if Estonia wants to grow and then grow the, the GDP of the country, et cetera, like uh, what, where are we gonna get like extra resources? And obviously uh, like immigration is, is um, doing part of the job, but once again, like we are living in North uh, in latitude 60. So which means that or 59, uh, it means that the same latitude as Alaska. Uh, so during the winter and autumn, uh, it's cold and dark and like not too many people wants to live here. Uh, so immigration is not like, uh, it's a good source of, of extra uh, workload, workforce, but uh, like it, it's not a solution. So for us, definitely the solution is uh, how to attract uh, more um, uh, women into tech. Uh, and we have tackled this problem in a, in a like, basically joint, they pop, like, basically from, from the new perspective, and one thing we have understood is that uh, uh, to get girls interested in technology and science, uh, this like needs to be treated um, like in a special way. And the special way is that you have to basically remove the boys from the classroom. So uh, uh, I think many countries already have found that, but uh, for us it was a epiphany that. Uh, if you, we always have, always have had mixed schools in Estonia, like there is no uh, uh, sex-based school in, in, in Estonia, but uh, let's say in some lessons like, like fiscal tour or like, uh, uh, like, uh, like, uh, like some, some very productive, uh, productive lessons, like they have separated girls and boys. And now we have discovered the same effect in, in, uh, in technology, like uh, basically when you remove the boys from the classroom, uh, the interest, the, 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 the um, ambition to study uh, uh, science and uh, technology increases significantly. Like uh, we started with a project, uh, uh, a test project, uh, just 18. And it already has like basically gone like food roof like. So uh, just a second. Yeah. Uh, uh, like you can you can see the like some examples of of, of the girls like so it's a nationwide initiative now. Uh, we have like girls group all, all around the country and we have special focus on 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 women and we really expect that. At the moment, we have every fifth uh, uh, position is filled by a female uh, worker in the ICT sector, but we really would love to have, like, see it, like uh, that every third person, uh, like position, at least third, is filled by 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 a woman, and uh, this this will be uh, like a huge uh, additional uh, resource uh, for us, and and also what like we can like give in return is is that. Uh, uh, like uh, the, the chance to get the competitive uh, salary, uh, like uh, have like um, equal salary to, to uh, like both men and women. Like uh, this can be also uh, basically like not solved, but uh, like you can get better results out of that. Like uh, through these kind of programs. Like so, uh, women are the future, uh, definitely. At least for Estonia, like uh, we see, like this is the, I'll say great resource that is not properly used still, like uh, whatever, like historical reasons. 
Uh, and my favorite topic that I already have actually uh, revealed to you, like, and we see more and more of this happening now globally, is the question like, uh, uh, who is like, uh, like, what is your economy like, and who will be contribute to your economy? And uh, like I said, Estonia is a 1.3 million like nation. It's a very so small, tiny, like thousand times smaller than than India, for example. And we also want to become like bigger because like we can want to get more wealth to our people, etc. And still maintain our uh, great nature, like clean air and, and water. So, uh, and like you remember my story that uh, I, I told you last time that it's very like difficult to basically motivate people to move in like physically. Like it's way better to, to live in Malaysia or like Singapore. It's warm and, and, uh, and shiny. It's not dark and, and, and cold. And uh, to do that, like it's important, like uh, if you can connect uh, other people outside from your country with, with your home country. And Estonia, uh, I mean, like those are like three of my children, like the ones who actually can go to school now, uh, like, like giving birth and having like higher birth rates. Like uh, we still like try to do that, but uh, like hasn't like like basically it keeps the country size like the same as these uh, uh, but the, our e-residence program like becomes more and more popular and we get more and more people uh, on global like to join our digital ecosystem so the idea is that uh, if you are on like an like, like citizen of, of Malaysia or like citizen of Thailand or like India or like uh, Germany like you can become uh, a digital Estonian which doesn't give you travel rights or like any Schengen access, but uh, it gives you like full access to the European Union market. Uh, so you can get a company and if your business is uh, liked by European banks, then you can get a bank account also, etc. So uh, it's a great view, like how to basically access like uh, a total new market. And for us, like, uh, uh, the number is still small, like especially in like uh, Asian scale. Like it's like at the moment we have around eighty like two thousand like e residents. But if you think that uh, the full uh, working age population in Estonia is uh, six hundred thousand, like uh, give or take uh, people, then uh, thanks to the digital tools, thanks to the fact that we have opened our economy and digital economy to also people outside. We have been able to increase that uh, uh, number. That is basically, I mean, people who are contributing to our economy, we have been increased, able to increase that like 30% during uh, last uh, like uh, five up to seven years. And this uh, continues. And you actually see these kind of initiatives uh, like followed by, by other countries, uh, especially here in Europe. But also in very interesting pro uh, projects uh, in US uh, relying on uh, blockchain and, and, and cryptocurrencies. Uh, like I really suggest you to look into DAO, uh, decentralized autonomous uh, organizations, uh, and uh, what Wyoming is doing. So um, um, basically, one uh, US state wants to repeat the success of Delaware, uh, like um, basically, who who changed the incorporation rules in the US and, and, and business law already like two centuries back, like it's 1894, I think they when they started. So now they want to do the same thing like uh, in, a, in a modern uh, digital societies. So I really suggest you to, to look into it and then uh, and, and see uh, like, um, if there is something interesting for you also like to analyze and then maybe copy uh, like to that to the country or region or like state uh, where you are located. So uh, once again, um, like uh, to finish my or you know, to conclude my 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 speech, uh, like like the future, the near future, next ten years. It's not about flying cars or even self-driving cars. Uh, you will see digital societies still struggle with the same issues, like basic issues, like uh, how to reduce fraud, like how to be sure, like who is behind the device, how to get the data moving uh, between the silos, how to make some sensible things out of that data. I mean, like I said, uh, fraud detection models, for example, or like how to predict like how your fifth grade curriculum influences your future salary. 
uh, how to get more women involved, etc. So you you see actually countries dealing with uh, with, the, with the with the basic things. I mean, they, they they seem to be basic, but they are actually create challenges because uh, I mean, like, uh, and and it's not the thing that like Estonia is small, and that's why Estonia was capable to move on fast. Like, uh, I really admire Indian Aadhaar project, for example, uh, the fact that they were able to give. Uh, Digital identity more to more than and collect biometrics from from more than one billion people. Like so, this is a very great great achievement, and this can be this can be copied like uh, or should be copied by other countries also. So um, I will finish with my same message I always give. Um, I try to think outside of the box and try to be engineered. Like uh, like com with the complex problems, they usually have very simple solutions if you don't involve politics. So if you can remove those two things, politics and engineering, you can actually be, build make great stuff. So thank you for having me and, and uh, see you soon. Thank you, Mr. Tavi. And it's so good to have you back on the MTM platform. And thank you for all of the delightful insights into the framework of the Estonian government and society that you've shared with us. Impressive figures, seven to eight unicorns from a mere 1.3 million population. I think us fellow Malaysians can truly benefit from learning the many advices that Tavi has imparted with us. Now, hang in there, Mr. Tavi, as our next topic is definitely within your forte, digital running through public veins that's coming up next where Mr. Tavi will be back joining us as one of our panelists. In the meantime, do share with us your thoughts on this session in the survey and we'll see you soon at the next session.